from kickoff here in Baltimore. Tony Romo. Can he bounce back from throwing five interceptions in that loss against the Chicago Bears? For more on him, here's Laura Oakman. Tom, it seems everyone has dissected those five interceptions, but nobody more so than Tony Romo. Tony told me he studied all of them, trying to find out if there's something he needed to change fundamentally, but said the biggest thing he got out of it was the attention to detail or the lack of it by him and the entire offense, saying it's a things that should be second nature, the communication, the route running, the holding the ball a second too long that we did not do. Jason Witten telling me we have a quarterback who is one of the best in the league when it comes to improvising, but we must keep it in the system. We must protect him today, and we have got to be what we're supposed to be, saying we go as he goes. Tom? Laura, thank you very much. Head coach John Harbaugh. His daughter Allison, a big hug. Good luck, Daddy. Put on the headset, and here we go. Jason Garrett, beginning his second full year as Cowboys head coach, was the interim head coach midway through the 2010 season. That team started one and seven. Under Garrett, went five and three. Dallas has won the toss. Will defer to the second half. Jacoby Jones. We'll watch that one sail off the upright. So we'll get a look right from the start at this new look hurry up Baltimore offense led by Joe Flacco and plenty of weapons around it. And just the weapons you want. Torrey Smith goes vertical. Anquan Bolden, Dennis Pitta gobble up the intermediate area. And oh, by the way, if they're not open, I can drop the ball off or hand it off to Ray Rice. Flacco last year became the first quarterback in league history to not only lead his team to the playoffs in each of his first four years, but win a playoff game in each of those seasons. And they will hand it off to Ray Weiss on first down. And he picks up maybe a yard. The Cowboys defensively, you said it a moment ago, Brian, much better than the group that struggled last year. Well, as we mentioned, they get Jay Ratliff in the middle of that defense so big. Everybody talks about the play of Sean Lee and the two biggest acquisitions in the offseason. Carr and Claiborne made the difference between a sorry group last year and a group that is competitive and among the top in the league. Second down and nine. Good hit goes to Torrey Smith. And a very... Short pickup, maybe four yards. It brings up the first third down. Neither one of these teams get off to especially fast starts offensively. Well, and that's so important on the case of the Baltimore Ravens because of this no huddle. The last thing you want to do is three and out, three and out. Joe Flacco told us it's all about completions, keeping the ball moving down the field. Well, just beyond the 25-yard line. We'll call it third down and a long four. Flacco gets it away. And right where he needed to get it, that's Jacoby Jones, and that'll move the chains. It's all about Joe Flacco's comfort in the pocket. This guy doesn't move a lot, around a lot. Here you can see a free runner with Sean Lee coming right down the pipe. And Joe Flacco still delivering the ball. These are the type of completions we're talking about. It keeps the chains moving, and it begins to wear out a defense. You don't have to run the ball to wear out a defense. You can't do it in the passing game. They can do it both ways with Ray Rice. Rice's second carry. And a good one this time. That's a gain of six for Ray Rice. When they have Vontae Leach in the game, this is the big fullback right there. This guy is the hammer, as Cam Cameron told us. This is the guy that, unique to a team that typically no, goes no huddle like Baltimore does now, they can put that big fullback in there and be as physical as they want to be. Hand it off to Weiss once more, and he appears to be about a yard, yard and a half shy of the first down this new look hurry up offense debuted in grand fashion week one against a good Cincinnati team 44 points against the Bengals they were slowed down a bit against Philadelphia but then New England and Cleveland under Cam Cameron 
941 yards of offense. That's the most in back-to-back -back games in franchise history. And Rice has a first down close to midfield. But then last week, what happened, Brian? Without a touchdown, under 300 yards of offense in that 9-6 win against Kansas City. Let's give some credit to the Kansas City defense. Romeo Cornell doing a good job of just one priority. They were going to run the ball. Here you can see Ray Rice. People, some people are questioning, does this style of play diminish Ray Rice? It does not. He's still going to have better than 350 touches by the end of the year. Rice comes in, he saw a second away to Jamal Charles in total yards from scrimmage in the NFL after leading the league in that category a season ago. And that'll be a gain of three on first down by Rice, second and seven on this opening possession of the afternoon. And talked about Jay Ratliff. Four consecutive Pro Bowls for the Dallas nose tackle playing in his first game of the season. But he's got an eye on his teammate, Sean Lismore, who's shaken up. We're back in a moment. This game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Eight play coming up on this opening drive of the game is Sean Lismore is being attended to over on the Dallas sideline. He's gotten a lot of playing time with all the injuries they've had so far on defense this year. Threading the needle is Flacco. And that is a first down of the 40. And once more, it's Jacoby Jones, his second catch of the afternoon. Flacco has come out of the gate three out of three. by Bruce Carter on him. Great concentration by Pitta. He is such a big part of the resurgence of the Baltimore offense. That intermediate throw like this with him and Anquan Bolin is such a big part of the completions that we talked about. Gain of eight, 10th play to draw the second down and two at the Dallas 31-yard line. And back to the ground. And that's Ray Rice for another Ravens first down to the 27-yard line. Now we talked about Dallas last week for their last game. They were without Ratliff. They were without Anthony Spencer. And they were without Kenyon Coleman. Coleman and Ratliff are back. Spencer is not still out with an injured shoulder. And a change on the Baltimore offensive front. They have brought back the veteran Bobby Williams, who is getting a start at left guard. They brought him as a free agent from the Bengals. And to have that veteran experience to fill in due to the injuries is huge for this offensive line. It's a young offensive line with a rookie at right tackle to fleet you assembly. Weiss for a pickup of two. It brings up second down and eight. Tom, Already here's the, better than five minutes shoot up on his drive. Yeah, Tom, here's the unique thing about the Baltimore Ravens. They're a spread out, no huddle offense. But when they want to be physical, as they are right now, they put Vontae Leach in the game. This is a team that's expansive, no huddle, throw the ball down the field. But when they want to get physical and go one on one, they've got the hammer in Vontae Leach. That's a unique combination in today's game where you have to almost choose between being wide open or being physical. They can be both. Blacko all day to throw, and that's Bernard Pierce out of the backfield. And he's run out of bounds right at the 20. It'll bring up third down and two, and next to zero pass rush so far by the Dallas Cowboys. And this is where the Cowboys need to start thinking about bringing more than just their down four. They've got these two good corners and Carr and Claiborne. That should give you license now to bring that fifth and sixth guy to try to put pressure on Joe Flacco, a guy who tends to stay in the pocket and you can't allow to be comfortable. We're going to run it third down and short, and Pierce nowhere to go. What a play made by Alex Albright. The ball will be spotted. Just inside the 20, but still about a yard and a half short. Albright, a backup making a big play. A whole bunch of folks. Dallas selling out to stop the run. They guessed right here by creating that edge and forcing Pierce back into the body of the defense. 
So if you're the Dallas defense, you feel pretty good about this. A lot of time off the clock, a lot of yards for the Ravens, but you hold them to a field goal try. Justin Tucker, 38 yards out. And this is rookie year. That's hit on 11 of 12. And that one is good. Three points on the Ravens opening drive. Romo and the Cowboys get it when we come back. Game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. Ray Rice and the Ravens on their opening possession goes 60 yards, 14 plays, two up better than seven minutes. Flacco perfect on the drive, but on a third and one, they could not cash in, forcing the field goal try, and it's good. Well, you'll take the three. Like we said, they've had a tough time scoring on their opening possession, so you'll take the three. But Dallas has got to feel good about it. The ball hammered through the back of the end zone by Tucker. Tony Romo trying to get it turned around from his last start, a loss. He threw five interceptions. What's in store for Romo today? On Fox is sponsored by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By Pizza Hut, make it great. And by Lowe's. Lowe's, never stop improving. That's how Brian Billick got to the game here today, the USS Constellation. Oh, that's my little yacht. Came up from Annapolis on that little bit of a USS Constellation. Great sight. First down give to DeMarco Murray. And you got to believe we'll get a heavy dose of him here today. They've really not given him a chance to run it a great deal since a great season opener he had against the Giants. Well, not only DeMarco Murray, but obviously with Des Bryant and Miles Austin, Jason Witten, they've got to help Tony Romo stay away from the turnovers that we've talked a great deal about. Gain a five on first down. Drop it off to Lawrence Vickers, their big powerful fullback. And he picks up a first down as he's run out of bounds at the 36-yard line, a gain of 11. It's Baltimore defense ranked 24th overall so far in the NFL. And the Cowboys showing some hurry up. Gain of four on a first down carry by DeMarco Murray. Tom, don't worry about that 24th ranking. This is still a pretty good defense by the Baltimore Ravens. Inside with Haloti Nada and Maki Kimuatu. It's awful tough run inside, and the play of corners Webb and Williams to go along, of course, with Ed Reed has been the reason why people have not generated a lot of big plays. it back to the inside able to pick up a couple of yards it'll bring a third down and a long four talked about the Ravens that field goal they scored a moment ago only six points Baltimore has scored on its opening possession the Cowboys are one of three teams who have failed to score on their opening possession this year First down to the Baltimore 45. Bryant coming off a Jekyll and Hyde night against Chicago two weeks ago. Three drops, caught eight. Great job of picking up the pressure. Watch the hesitation by Romo. He pulls it back in, buying just that extra bit of time to get the ball to the big Des Bryant. Well, you saw Bryant just throw Jimmy Smith out of his way. Bryant, the enormously talented, oftentimes troubled receiver of the Cowboys. Murray for a gain of close to five. We mentioned that game against Chicago. 
You know, many felt like he was in part responsible for the interception that went for a touchdown by Charles Tillman. He had a career high 105 receiving yards, but he had three drops in the game as well. And in fairness, we're not apologizing to Tony Romo, but when you go back and look at the interception, he's kill. been betrayed by his receiving core, and that's got to be a big part of what they stay away from today with this Raven group that feeds off a of turnover. Murray on a second down, carry, and he breaks off the left side. DeMarco Murray dragged down all the way inside the 10-yard line. And for Cowboy fans, they're saying, why have we not stayed with this since the opening game of the season? You've got to give yourself a chance to stay with the run, and as we said to start the game, it's on the edges where the Baltimore Ravens are vulnerable, not in the inside. DeMarco Murray is an excellent edge runner with those stretch zones play. This bodes very well for the Cowboys early. Game of 28. Murray to the sideline. Felix Jones checks in. And they'll give it to him. And he's tripped up, and a flag comes in late. Holding offense number 68. It's a right tackle, Doug Free. They're trying to rebuild this offensive line from that group that was together for so many, many years. They flip flop the tackles this year, Free and Smith. Well, you're exactly right, Tom. It's a group that, you know, for years it was Leonard Davis and Mark Colombo and Andre Garrard. They got smaller as they made the transition and just got blown over. This is a big offensive line, but it's one that's still coming together to learn how to play together. They've got Phil Costa back for the first time at center. After he left the opening game of the season, the opening series of the season. Officials gathering to make sure they have the spot of the football correct. And this might carry our referee today. Yeah, the, the, the penalty down here is symbolic of a team that has struggled in an opening drive. There's a lot of ways not to be productive, not the least of which, of course, is turnovers, but penalties as you get down in the red zone. This can become lethal, and D Dean Peace, obviously the defensive coordinator here, he puts a high premium on success in the red zone. He doesn't care what his overall ranking is, but he knows red zone success is a major determinant for success. Felix Jones, he'll gobble up all that yards. And he is run out of bounds at the one yard line. And after watching Kansas City just run right down the collective throat of this defense, Dallas is doing the same on the ground today. I want you to watch this edge again. This is twice now they've gotten to that edge. Ray Lewis not being able to get off the block to close off a play that normally he would. Tries to drop his shoulder. You've got to stick the ball out there, son. Oh, boy, this one's going to be looked at. Someone's going to throw a flag here because that looked like a touchdown. Of course, it was a non-scoring play, so this is not going to come above from above. And now Jason Garrett gets the red flag out there. Shows off that right arm. Yes, he does. Five years in the league as a quarterback. Got that thing darn near out to the hash. Garrett is the first former Cowboys player to become the team's head coach. This looks like a touchdown all the way. I got a feeling we're coming down to a verdict that says touchdown. The ruling on the field is the ball is short of the touchdown. This looks like a touchdown here. He is in bounds. Now he's going to reach the ball out over and break the plane right there over the pylon or inside the pylon, I should say. Well, that's a touchdown, folks. Doesn't matter where the back lands as long as the ball crosses the plane in the play of field inside the pylon. Should be noted that Jason Garrett is one and one. One four one in challenges. Trying to make it two out of two right now. After review, the runner remained inbound for a score. So it is a touchdown for the Cowboys. For what it's worth. All time in a short time where you're able to challenge a play. 
No team has successfully challenged plays more than the Dallas Cowboys. Means they got good people up in the booth. You know, I got guys that uh, either went snow blind <laughs> or just wanted to make me look bad. Because uh, I think my uh, challenge record is well under 500. So now, now to point out there for Dan Bailey. Cowboys scoring on their opening drive for the first time all year long. Boy, they get it on the ground. 61 rushing yards. And Jason Garrett fist pumping the score. In Dallas, following the Cowboys, they dissect everything. Unbelievable coverage, naturally, for the Cowboys. And over the last number of years, Brian, it seems like a never-ending sock. Have they given up on the run game two weeks ago against Chicago? You know, after an 11-yard carry, you didn't hear boo from DeMarco Murray. That one bouncing around in the end zone and taking a knee is Jones. So in a 7-3 game, Baltimore gets the ball for the second time. We invite you to join the NFL and the American Cancer Society in the fight against breast cancer by supporting a crucial catch campaign. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid now on some of this authentic NFL paint gear worn by players and coaches. And we thank them for this uh, lovely tie that I am uh, donning here today. Yeah. Had the uh, Baltimore Marathon yesterday. Great turnout. Great to be in the city with all the activity, all benefiting from breast cancer. Well, Flacco right back at it, looking to set up the screen. And it's incomplete. Second down and 10. Let's check in down along the sideline with Laura. Tom, the Cowboys defense without defensive tackle Sean Lismore. X ray showed a right ankle sprain. He is done for the day. Laura, thank you. That's already a thin group as far as defensive linemen are concerned for the Cowboys. We mentioned earlier they are without Marcus Spears today. And without linebacker Anthony Spencer. Catch made by Ed Dixon. First time we've called his name today. That duo of Dixon and Pitta combined for 94 receptions at the tight end position a year ago. And Dennis Pitta has been the primary tight end target for him, but the ability to have two tight ends in there, both run and pass, has been huge for this no huddle offense of the Baltimore Ravens. So Anthony Spencer rooting on his teammates along the sideline, looking for a third down stop. And just thrown well beyond the intended receiver Pitta. And once again, it was Sean Lee putting the big hit on Flacco. Yeah, coming off the edge here. This is a big part of it. You can see he gets pressure right through Ray Rice and Joe Flacco barely able to get the ball off. Ray Rice usually much better in pass protection than that. But Sean Lee is someone that uh, he's a load. He comes in through there. Yeah, you don't want to go without your gunner over here. Late substitution by Baltimore. Sam Cook to punt it, standing at his own 15. Des Bryant returned two punts for touchdowns his rookie year. A very quiet so far this year. Fair catch at the 20. Ray Lewis in the Ravens defense run over on that opening possession. I'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world, watching today's game in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea on AFM, the American Forces Network. God bless you all. Stay well, and we thank you for all you do, standing tall and proud for the greatest country in the world. Over! 7-3, Dallas. Getting the football, and Romo looking down the field for Bryant. Defender fell down, and the catch is made. It is a first down up to the 37-yard line. Talked about the defender falling down, Lardarius Webb, who led them in interceptions a season ago, has not gotten up. You're going to see here at the top one-on-one, -on -one, again, Des Bryant, just a big physical receiver. He's going to run this comeback route. And just kind of buckled up there. Looks like they may have collided knees. You hope that that's all it is. Maybe a bruise. 
the secondary of the Baltimore Ravens. Some people question coming into the season, but they've really turned into what some people think may be the best secondary in the National Football League. Well, it was Ladarius Webb who said before the season ever began, he said, we will have the best secondary in the NFL before all is said and done. Well, when you start with Ed Reed, that's a good start. But mm -hmm. at the corner position where they've been kind of building slowly with Webb, they got Kerry Williams. And young Jimmy Smith, who they got in the draft late, has really begun to come on. You know you have to have three starting corners. And uh, that's huge. You hope you hope all that is is just a bruised knee. Of course, that's easy to say. It's not my knee. But much rather have that than the, uh, the other alternatives. Certainly, we wish Webb well. We're going to get him to the sideline. And I would imagine quickly for the Ravens locker room. So a gain of 18. Romo is 4 of 4 to begin the afternoon. Jimmy Smith, number one pick a year ago, replaces Webb and bouncing it to the outside. Boy, this is one tough, strong runner in DeMarco Murray. Again, we see a run that gets to the edge of the defense. Everybody's hard inside and right here. Look at the edge that they've created. Now they get a little seepage with Ray Lewis in through here, but it's that edge rushing that so far has been a bit of an Achilles heel for the Baltimore Ravens. Sixth carry of the game for Murray, and it's another big one. Crosses midfield and down to the Ravens 44 yard line. We mentioned last week Kansas City running for 200 yards against the Ravens. Jamal Charles was over 120 by halftime. And they just got gashed in the first half. Now they did make some adjustments in the second half with regards to shades, but this is for not for lack of people. Like last week against Kansas City, they've got DBs down in the box almost every snap. This is not a loose defense. They have the right number count, but it's not helping right now. They clock down to one. They just do, or did they get it all? Perhaps a timeout called. Timeout. Dallas, their first. And Romo saying, why? He got the playoff, it looked like, before the play clock ran out. But the bottom line is, the Dallas Cowboys have rushed for 79 yards here in the opening quarter. And the tight ends are always a big part of the running offense. This is a big offensive line, but they're securing the edges with the tight end, both in protection and also in the run, that helps you get to these edges. This has got to be a concern for the Baltimore Ravens right now because Dallas has picked up where Kansas City left off at the end of the game, all but in a 9-6 loss. Felix Jones getting his first rushing touchdown today since September of last year. They remember we had the Cowboys in that unbelievable overtime win in San Francisco, and that's when Jones injured his shoulder. And you see the numbers already. A Baltimore defense giving up 120 rushing yards per game. First and 10, 48 seconds to go in the opening quarter. Murray just right up the gut. And that'll be a gain of almost eight on first down. Let's check in once more with Laura Oakman. We saw Ladarius Webb being carried off of the Ravens field into the locker room. It is a sprained right knee. His return is questionable. Laura, thank you very much. Well, they spot it at the 38 yard line. It's so going to be a gain of six, second and four. It back to the inside. He knew that's where the first down marker was. What a big quarter for DeMarco Murray. 72 rushing yards. Cowboys lead 7 3. Well, you wonder when the last time numbers like that rushing yards were put up against this Ravens defense over five quarters. I mean, bear in mind now, man, to put this into perspective, 
We'll come back to that in a moment. Yeah, we got to go back to that last play, Tom. You can see here the two tight end offense we talked about. Now watch this. They've been gashed on the edge all day. Nice job collapsing it down here. And then Bernard Pollard, he has got to get into the mix here. They're bringing enough people down to stop the run. They're just not making the plays right now. Second down and six after the run by Murray. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay. First quarter is everything, man. When the whistle blows, somebody should be getting knocked out. Let's show them what it feels like to play our type of football for four quarters. Oh. Don't wait till the second half. Oh. Let's do what we do in the first quarter, man. But they can't even wait till the second quarter right now. They got to get it done right now because right now the Dallas Cowboys are shoving it down the throat of the Baltimore Ravens. Third down and one. And that's the first down plunge by Murray. Let's check in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Falcons bet Ryan through a couple of first quarter interceptions, but he's bounced back with a touchdown in the second. This is to Roddy White, four yards on the score, and the Falcons have a lead over the Raiders, 7-3 in the second quarter. Tom Bryant. All right, Kurt, thank you very much. You know, we're starting to talk about the decade of dominance, this Baltimore defense. I mean, of all the numbers you think about, 16 years in a row, they have held opponents to less than four yards rushing per carry on the year. 16 years in a row. It got to the point where teams didn't even try to run anymore because of those numbers. And they are just getting manhandled up front right now by Dallas. I can't overstate the importance of this start of the Dallas Cowboys, Tom. you got to keep in mind how they started against Seattle. You're talking about a fumbled kickoff, a block punt, an interception. Tampa Bay, they threw an interception in the opening series. We've already talked about the five interceptions against Chicago. Just to have the precision that they have right now to start a game has to give them huge confidence. Sam Terry's 81 rushing yards for DeMarco Murray. And they play fake. And nearly taken down was Romo. Heavy pressure off the edge by Albert McClellan. That brings up a third down and four. And this is where Tony Romo needs to be careful. This is why a quarterback gets paid the big bucks. You want to get the first down, you want the touchdown, but you want to maintain the points as well. You've got to be very prudent in the red zone. Jason Whitten, someone you want to keep an eye on. I don't think they got it off before the play clock. Are they saying timeout Baltimore or? Timeout Baltimore. Wow. First. They have given Dallas a break right there. This game on Fox is sponsored by Cadillac, the standard of the world. By Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. And by Bank of America. Cowboys in front, 7-3, knocking on the door. With a football at the 12 of the Ravens, third down and four. I'll say it again. Jason Witten is the guy you want to keep an eye on in this situation in the red zone. Well, they spread him out. And the handoff gets him a first down, but there is a penalty flag on the play. He had a sense when Dallas spread everybody way out that they were going to hand it off. We may have a forward motion here by the receiver. Illegal shift on the offense. Both wide receivers are moving and did not take a step before the snap. Five-yard penalty is still third. Pelodi Nada limping to the sideline. Three-time pro bowler. Been bothered by hamstring going all the way back to training camp. 
The DP said, I don't care where my defense is ranked. There's three areas I want to be good at. Obviously, points allowed. Red zone percentage, giving up the touchdown in the red zone. They're currently seventh. And, of course, third downs. He says, these are the only three stats I care about. He is their third defensive coordinator in the last three years. The fourth in the last five years. So third and four becomes third and nine. of Des Bryant, and you can't do it any better than Jimmy Smith. There's another penalty flag down. And Bernard Pollard pointing to the Cowboys sideline. This is one you likely turn down because you don't want to give them another shot. You, you, you haven't moved them out of field goal position yet, so an additional yardage here I don't think makes that much of a difference for the Ravens. Illegal shift, offense, alignment and back were moving at the same time and did not get set for a second. That penalty is declined. Comes up fourth down. Brian, how does that happen? Well, I tell you what, I see it time and time again. People come in, and because of the complexity of the Ravens' defense, you try to check too much. You try to be too precise. And with Tony Romo checking from one play to another, or maybe going up to the line, not everybody quite on the same page. Not excusable, but that's the reason you see it. 42 yard field goal try. Good snap. Good hold. Perfect kick by Dan Baylor. A real good start for Romo and the Cowboys. Jason Witten, obviously, a big part of their ability to run the ball. Hasn't shown yet, yet in the passing game, but Tony Romo loves the pace of what's happening for the Cowboys right now. All the running is going to lead to a big play, and that Ravens defense trying to figure out how are they getting to the edge of the defense. 111 rushing yards. A little more than a quarter so far for the Cowboys. Let's go back and look at these penalties that we're talking about. Here you can see Tony Romo. He is killing the play. He's obviously called two plays in the huddle. He's telling him, no, I'm changing to a run because that's what the play was. And now you've got to reshift yourself. Both people moving in to account for a running play, and they never get set. You have two people moving at once. Yes, that's been very productive for them. They said they wanted to simplify coming in. It can be a good plan, but it does take a lot to orchestrate in a very loud stadium. Dad! Last possession for the Ravens. It was three and out. Their opening possession, they went down the field, had to settle for a field goal from Justin Tucker. And now in the mix, a great run. And that's a first down carry all the way up to the 32-yard line. Same type of thing here. Let it run, and we're going to see the defense get collapsed right there. Seal, and then getting up and through here. The same type of run that Dallas is beating, has been beating the Baltimore Raven defense on, working those edges with a back like Ray Rice. Rice once more. That'll be a gain of two, tripped up by Kenyon Coleman. And let's check in once more with Laura Oakman. Quick update, Tom, and hello to Nada. He is in the Ravens' locker room. It is a right knee sprain. They are trying to tape him up, and he is going to attempt to come back out later in the game. Laura, thank you. Nada, perhaps the most athletic defensive tackle in the league, stops a run. Hey, he's 20 sacks. Heck, he has three interceptions in his career. Pretty good for a big man. Not bad. <laughs> Never gets outside the tackle. Second down and eight. Blacko. End of traffic and nearly intercepted by Mike Jenkins. He had an eye on Torrey Smith. You just can't cover it any better than this. Once they get past five yards, you got to cover with your legs and be in position to make a play. Not now. There's no call there. If uh, this, uh, the fans are booing, had that been the other way, with Dallas on offense and the Ravens on defense, they'd have, they'd have not liked it there either. So that's a good coverage by Jenkins. Jenkins has lost his starting job. He was a Pro Bowler just two years ago. And Flacco 
to a wide open lost in all the traffic Ray Rice to the 20 run out of bounds first down Rice and the Ravens this is just what kills you in the passing game watch Ray Rice he's going to help a little bit here just chip on the back Flacco looking downfield not there I'm looking deep for a touchdown intermediate no I'll just drop it off for a few yards to Ray Rice and oh by the way he darn near takes it to the house it's 43 yards on the reception Ray. by Rice he'll get some water catches breath and Art Pierce checks in A touchdown to tie for the Ravens. White clock ran out. Delay. Offense five yard penalty is still first. Well, the same thing happened to Joe Flacco that happened to Tony Romo. He was based on what he saw defensively. He was trying to check to another play. They got Vontae Leach in, which indicates they tend to probably want to get downhill. He was either trying to check to a run or change from one to the other. Wasn't aware of the clock, and you don't expect that at home. There's such a no huddle based offense, it's odd for them to be caught with delay of game. Each side pointing at the other. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 97 jumps into the neutral zone. Talking immediate reaction by an opponent. Five yard penalty is still first. That's Jason Hatcher. Mike Carey doing an excellent job of recognizing being in a neutral zone. Brought the action of the tackle. But DeMarcus Ware stands and watches on his first down and back to first and ten. And this is Pierce. He slips through the left side. And he's inside the ten down to the seven yard line. And Vontae Leach again leading the way. Once again, let's talk about the hammer, Vontae Leach. Few teams can get into the eye and be as physical. Nice job of opening a hole for Pierce. This is the physicality I'm talking about that the Baltimore Ravens can go out of their no huddle, spread it out offense, and just play smash ball with you if they want. Rice back in, and the carry inside the five takes him down close to the one yard line. Rattler saying, I have the football, that it came loose. The officials aren't buying it. They're actually going to spot it at the two. Well, the knee was down. Then the ball looked to come out. Rayla just got, oh, I got the ball here. That would have been a tough one to challenge. Play fake one way. Blanco gets it away, and then it was dropped by Dixon, maybe tipped before he got to him. Incredible athletic play by Joe Flacco. Quarterback hates this. Yeah, I like the play fake, but you're turning your back to the defense. Now you're going to take a peek, and all of a sudden this guy's in your face. You buy just a little bit of time. Flacco, a big man. That's a very accurate throw under duress by Joe Flacco. Obviously should have been caught by Dixon. Well, it wasn't tipped. It was just a drop. Rice incomplete. He was wide open, and Flacco, rather than throwing it to the outside, threw it to the inside. There is a penalty marker down. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 99. After the goal, and automatic. First down. That's a big time break right there for Baltimore. That was. I think it happened in here where he gets jammed as he goes to release. And now all of a sudden he grabbed him. That's just defensive holding. Always oh, tough for a quarterback right there. He holds him as he leaves. You got a big defensive lineman trying to keep up with the tight end. That's a bad mismatch. Rice. Still no signal. And now it's a touchdown.
Well, you put it in the hands of Ray Rice, and good things more times than not are going to happen, and he was a huge part yet again of that touchdown scoring drive. The biggest play, of course, coming on just that little check play. This is the downhill hill physicality we're talking about. You know, here in Baltimore, they keep worrying that this no huddle means a diminished Ray Rice, but it doesn't. Last couple years, 2011, he had 367 touches. 2010, the year before, 370. He's on pace for that the same way. It's just a little bit more in the passing game. I don't care how he gets in his hands as long as he gets it. And on full display on this drive, the 43-yard reception capped off by the touchdown. And we're tied at 10. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Cadillac, the standard of the world. Ray Rice, five touches of the eight plays on that 80-yard scoring drive. All but 17 of those yards, thanks to him. Maybe the best all-around back in the league between running and his ability to catch the ball in the backfield. Of course, Adrian Peterson having a monster year coming back from uh, from injury as well. But I don't know. Ray Rice gives you so many different levels that he can hurt you with. Much like LaShawn McCoy. Absolutely. Well, of course, the Fox doubleheader on football and coming up after America's Game of the Week. Fox Toberfest continues. It's Game 1 of the National League Championship Series. The defending World Series champion Cardinals take on Buster Posey and the Giants. It's following football tonight on Fox. Seven twenty-nine to play until halftime. Ten ten game. And the Cowboys stay on the ground. They will on first down. Kyle moves forward for a. Gain of two, maybe three. Let's take a game break and check in with Kurt Menefee. Well, after the Jets' defense picked off Andrew Luck, the Jets' offense turned it into points. Sean Green, 10-yard run for the touchdown. It's 14-3. Now just past midway point in the second quarter. Tom and Bud. Of course, we had those Colts last week, that unbelievable second half to come back and beat Green Bay. Here for Dallas, two rock-solid possessions. To start this Sunday afternoon on enemy turf. And Romo to throw it. Short drop. And the catch is made. First time we've called the name of Miles Austin. This is an excellent outside throw by Tony Romo. He's going to have opportunities here. You've got to know the Baltimore Ravens aren't going to let them run down the field or try not to let them pound the ball away. They're going to give them opportunities because they're going to pack that box. They're going to get one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside that Tony Romo is going to need to take care of. You can see right here, they keep packing the box. Tony Romo's either got to go away from this pressure or throw it. Well, they pick it up, and he's going to throw it. And he's looking across the middle, and it's caught a sliding catch. Once more, it is Miles Austin. They remember it was three years ago this week when he had his first start, 250 receiving yards in Kansas City. Two Pro Bowls for the last two years been nicked up with injuries. You can see him right here. He sees the guy down the box. He's going to give the play action fake. That leaves nothing underneath. They come zooming inside to affect the run, opening the hole for Miles Austin in behind him. After a couple of pass plays, they go back to the ground game. It's been unbelievably successful here in the opening half. And Murray is already closing in on a 100-yard rushing day. And that's what this chess game is becoming about now, Tom. They ran the ball well. Now they've thrown it a couple times. Defensive quarter and Dean Peace on every play has to decide, do I think it's run or do I think it's pass? Because we have to sell out either one. There's no guessing in between. to get to the first down marker. He looks to be about a yard short, maybe a little less than that. He's going one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Kerry Williams, and the size of Des Bryant is making a difference here. 
right here, Tony Romo told us he needs to look off guys like Ed Reed and Ray Lewis, then comes back because he knows he's got the one-on-one -on -one matchup that he likes on the left side with Bryant, but he's got to account for Ray Lewis and Ed Reed on every snap. And again, it's Des Bryant, and this time he has the first down to the 35-yard line. That's a safe throw on a third down and a yard. And that's three times we've come underneath, Tom. We are going to see a double move by Des Bryant here pretty soon, where he starts with that little stutter and go. That's what got them the interception against Chicago. Des Bryant thought he needed to go vertical. Tony Romo was throwing underneath just like he is right now. My guess is they got that hey. sorted out. We're going to see kill, a double kill, move kill. and a shot to Des Bryant down the field here fairly soon. to the ground game and back to the Marco Murray who just runs right over Bernard Pollard. And there aren't many guys in this league that can say that. Pollard among the most punishing hitters in the NFL. Look at the pad level of Murray here. You love this guy as a play caller. Now Pollard, now this guy, like you said, he's as physical as any guy down the box as you're going to get. But you get positive yards with DeMarco Murray as a play caller. Hey, maybe I don't gash you big times, but I stay out of those second and 12, second and 13s. I don't care if it's just three yards, three and a half yards. I'm getting positive yards every time. They play this drive. Look at the patience by Murray. Just waiting for the blocking in front of him. There is a penalty flag down. Holding offense number 77. Ten yard penalty is still second down. Here on the left side here, you're going to see it. Tyren Smith, the patience of Murray. That's what held up, held up, and you can see here, I, I don't know, I tell you what, yeah, that last little pull right there. Really didn't need that. Got up to that second level, and right here against Terrence Cody, he had him, and then that last little bit, he was actually past him. I don't know that Smith needed to hang on to the end there, Boston. Well, that would have been a significant pickup. But instead of penalty, makes it a second down and 15. And the Baltimore 40. We need to run it again here because the Baltimore Ravens are showing a passive coverage. Romo looking for a penalty flag. Maybe somebody holding Kevin Ogletree for a third down upcoming. Big thing here is no interceptions. DeMarco Murray, we've already talked about what a great start he's gotten off to. Pretty soon the outside receivers, Miles Austin, Des Bryant, they need to start to show up because the Ravens are going to increasingly try to stuff this run. But not here on third and 15. Well, Romo has not been good on third down so far this year among the worst quarterbacks in the league. Well, they might get some yardage up without snapping the ball. Neutral zone infraction. Defense number 83. Five-yard penalty is still third. And that may seem a little penalty, but this takes us from out of field goal position to now on the edge of it. This changes the play calling. Obviously, you want the first down, keep the drive alive. You don't need much to get into field goal position for the Dallas Cowboys. Third down at 10. Romo rolling, looking down the field, and he throws the interception. We just got finished saying it. Romo this year. His fourth interception on a third down play, most in the league. Well, this is symbolic of Tony Romo trying to explain to the receivers where he's expecting them. Tony Romo is so good at making plays outside the design of the offense, but sometimes it comes back and bites him.
I can't put this one on the receiver necessarily. Ogletree just couldn't quite get to it, and now it looks like an overthrow for the interception. Hard to put that one on the receiver, but again, Tony Romo expecting the receiver to run through the catch and not end up with an interception. 2.15 to go until halftime. Blacko and the Ravens from their own 20. Two timeouts left, plus a two-minute warning. He just throws it away. Got Anquan Bolden. We talk about the impact he has in the intermediate areas has not been a factor yet. We really haven't seen him take those shots down the field. Big play coming to Ray Rice with a dump off underneath. Of course, at this point in the game, don't know that we'll see a lot of verticals, but that's typically when Bolden shows up. A lot of verticals down the field and come off the Bolden and the tight end. Rice for a yard. This will take us to the two minute warning. So third and nine coming up. We're in a 10-10 game That's in Baltimore. Kevin Ogletree trying to figure out, is there something I did wrong? Is there something I could have done better to help my quarterback, Tony Romo? Big play for the Ravens. They don't convert on this. They're going to have to punt the ball back to the Cowboys, who have two timeouts left. We've got a lot of this going on so far. Wow. Ball start, offense number 81. Five-yard penalty, it's still third down. And that's Antoine Bolden. So third and nine just became third and 14. Third and nine, you convert at best about 25% of the time. Third and 13, whew, that cuts that percentage less than half. So you need to get out to the 30-yard line to keep this drive alive, but the Cowboys get it back. And they pick it up and then some, the first catch of the game for Bolden, his 98th consecutive game with a reception. Watch the job here on the right. Bale Semele, the rookie against Ware. Nice job holding out just enough. Jacoby Jones clears it out. We just said Anquan Bolden hasn't shown up. The vertical threat clears it out. Anquan Bolden shows up on a big third down. And then Bolden once more making it back-to-back -back catches up close to midfield. Clock running. Ravens with two timeouts left. Brian, I want to go back very quickly to the third down and 14. You saw a linebacker in coverage with Anquan Bolden. If you're a Cowboy fan, you're saying to yourself, how in the world does that happen, third down and 14? Well, in a third and long, you're going to be very passive to make sure we don't get the big play down the field. And you're betting that the catch and run won't be enough to get the first down. Probably needed to drop underneath that. You're right. That's not the matchup that you want. But it's a lot of change-up zone coverages. Don't give up the big play. Let them throw underneath, and we'll stop them for the first down. Didn't work the way it was drawn up on that play. So the Ravens now with one timeout left. 148 to play until halftime. Smith to the 30. No, it's Bolden for the third time on this drive. So without a catch, the entire first half, now three alone. Well, all of a sudden, the experience and the physicality, the sure hands of Anquan Bowden starting to show up. What was a desperate third and 15, now all of a sudden, Baltimore in scoring position. And it is a catch made by Pitta. So prior to that, Bolden had gone gain of 20, gain of 15, gain of 20. Now well within field goal range as the flag is down. I think the offensive line of the Baltimore Ravens moved. Ball start. Offense number 73. Five-yard penalty is still second down. There will not be a 10-second runoff as we are outside one minute of play. Yonda. That was more than Marshall Yonda. I think that whole interior moved around. This is one of the nice things for the Ravens. They're so heavy into the no huddle offense. When you get in these critical two minute situations, they've got their whole offense available to them. It's not a separate entity. Second down and seven. And he gets it away in time. And the catch is made right at the marker. 
Once more, it's a tight end pit up. And it is a first down. Clock running under a minute. 10-10 time. No pass rush and to the end zone. Flag down. Catch is made by Smith. But is this offensive pass interference? That's Claiborne, who was beat on the coverage and is hurt in the end zone. And Smith already in celebration mode after eavesdropping. Well, that flag came out too early in the call for it to be offensive pass interference, which it looked like he may have pushed off on Claiborne. Looks well, there's like two flags now. There's one of the 20 and there's one of the seven. That, that little push there is what you and I saw, Tom. There are two caught. fouls, both on the defense. 12 men on the field is declined. Pass interference defense number 24. It is also declined for the good. Wow. And the most important news of all this is the fact that Claiborne, the first defensive player taken in last year's draft, has still not gotten up. While they tend to him, we check in back in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Coming up on the Visa Halftime, we'll have highlights from a busy week six, including the Falcons looking to go to 6-0 as they host the Raiders. But it may not be that easy. Matt Ryan picked off twice in the first quarter. Plus, Andrew Luck takes his first trip to New York to take on the Jets. It's all coming up on the Visa Halftime. See you there. So Smith, the touchdown reception, despite the fact that it looked like he was the one that may have gotten away with pass interference. Yeah, right here, this could be incidental contact, but it look, I don't know that he actually pushed off as much as Claiborne just kind of crumpled there in the corner underneath him. It sure looked like he got away with the push. That's insult to injury to outnumber him 12 to 11 and get a penalty on top of it. I, obviously, because they called a hold on Claiborne. That had to happen early in the play. We certainly didn't see it there at the end. Cowboys traded up eight spots to get Claiborne coming out of LSU, the Southeastern Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Missing entire offseason after he underwent left wrist surgery, but has really started his professional career in a great way, and you hope he's all right. Point after. And the Ravens. 17 to 10 lead with 41 ticks remaining until halftime and we check in back in LA this time with our friend Patrick O'Neill. All right Tom thanks a lot Colts at the Jets Jets sharing after Tim Tebow kept the drive alive on a fourth and 11 Mark Sanchez his second touchdown of the day this one to Jason Hill do the Colts have another comeback in him trailing 21 to 6 Tom and Brian back to you. Well, Rob Ryan's trying to figure out after playing really a very good quarter and a half how the Baltimore Ravens were able to go the length of the field. In typical Raven fashion now Joe Flacco airing it out. They're looking at that right knee. It appears a Morris Claiborne over on the sideline. Let's remember these found these uh, uh, Ravens now. They're on pace. Right now they lead the league in explosive plays, plays in 20 yards or more. They're on pace for 96 explosive plays. That would match the 2001 greatest show on turf to uh, St. Louis Rams. Lawrence Dickers will bring it out to the 30 yard line. Now we're going to go back. We thought maybe. Torrey Smith had pushed off, but now you know, this is like a three-legged sack race here. You know, you just kind of get wound up. Incidental contact going down. That's probably a good no call. Claiborne looking around. That's the number you were talking about, including a game here today. 33 plays of 20 or more yards. All three came on that last drive. Yeah, and keep in mind that the Ravens have come so far in that category. They were 22nd and 29th in the lead, respectively, the last two years to now lead the lead in explosive play. The Cowboys have one timeout left. They're just going to hand it off. 
and take, it appears, this seven-point deficit into the locker room. And, you know, Brian, you, you know, with all the talk about Tony Romo, who is undeniably the most polarizing figure of any quarterback in the NFL, his highs, his lows, Visa halftime coming up in a minute. But again, you go back down to the drive down here. They are in field goal range. He has a chance to put his team in front. He throws another critical interception, giving Flacco and the Ravens a chance to take the lead, which they do into the half. And on the road, you can't make those kind of mistakes. They will come back and bite you as they did. Fox NFL Sunday continue. The Visa halftime report, 17-10, Baltimore. And a very exciting first half just about set to go for the beginning of the third quarter. We invite you to follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. 17 to 10, the home team in front, the Baltimore Ravens. Back with Brian Billick and Laura Oakman. I'm Tom Brenneman. Great to have you with us here for the NFL on Fox. And you look at the second half. Now, the Cowboys have had a tendency to get away from the run game. That clearly has been their strength so far here today. Do you expect them to stay running the football? They're going to get the first uh, crack at it. Absolutely. It's a one-score game. They're on the road. they got to feel good about that. They ran the ball so effectively in the first half. They're going to have to take some shots down the field, probably off of play action because they are running it well, but they're not going to get away from this running game, not with the game only being a seven-point differential. What a big-time swing there, the final moments of the opening half where the Cowboys looked like they were going to grab the lead, tied at 10. Romo, the interception. And then an 80-yard drive to the go-ahead score by Flacco and the Ravens. Let's check in downstairs with Laura. Tom, I talked to John Harbaugh, who said offensively the reason that rhythm was so successful was because of the completions. I asked him, how much no huddle, sugar huddle are we going to see in the second half? He said, that is the goal. We're going to try to do that, stopping the run defensively. We need to play better up front, not get blocked inside. Of course, Jason Garrett we are going to keep running the ball. DeMarco Murray had his foot taped up at halftime. He's going to try to go. Morris Clay right now getting x-rays on his knee. Well, it's Felix Jones in the backfield and a big gainer on first down for Jones who had his first rushing touchdown since September of last year but came in the opening quarter here today. Well this is what is surprising right here in the heart of the defense. We've talked about Haloti Nada, Maki Kimuatu, Ray Lewis. Conceivably, you can't get down the middle of the Ravens defense, but on the very first play, that's exactly what the Cowboys did. Right back to the ground once more and trying to slip right up the gut is Jones. That could be a huge story in this game if DeMarco Murray is unable to be back at 100% after rushing for 90 yards in the opening half. Well, in the one-two punch of Murray and Felix Jones, like most teams, everybody likes to have the two-headed backs now that they can throw at you. This may fall on the shoulders of Jones if they can continue to try to maintain the run. Well, he was their primary back, you may remember, as recently as just two years ago. In fact, was their main guy even early last year before injuring that shoulder in September and was never right again. Romo down the middle. First time, it's Jason Witten. And the future Hall of Famer has run out of bounds all the way down to the 33-yard line. Witten, a seven-time Pro Bowler, on pace to break Michael Irvin's franchise record for all-time reception sometime this November. And I want you to watch out here, Ed Reed, trying to anticipate underneath Tony Romo holding off Ed Reed. Now he sees across the field with nothing underneath him. Ed Reed trying to see if he can undercut a ball underneath Jason Witten early. That allowed Witten to get over the top and down the field. Well, it looked like a shot. Down below the knees of Romo as he turned that ball loose. And a penalty flag blows this one dead before it ever starts. Ball start, 68 offense, five-yard penalty, and still first. That has been a huge, huge problem for both of these Dallas tackles. Doug Free on the right side, Tyron Smith on the left side. And we talked about Whip, 31 years old, a native of Elizabethton, Tennessee. One of the most prolific tight ends in NFL history. 
and soon will rewrite the Cowboy record books for all-time reception. What a player. What a player. One yard line. You know, you look at Witten, and the story is told that during the preseason, had a lacerated spl spleen and did nothing for basically three weeks. And he said three days before the season opener against the New York Giants, he said, I'm playing. And what a huge emotional lift that was for the Cowboys. He has missed one game in his entire career. One. And that was a broken jaw back in 2003. Leaping over the pile is Jones once more, and he's to the 25. That'll bring up a third down and a long three. Again, just straight downhill. You can see Ray Lewis here in the middle. The guard in the center come off. Ray Lewis in position to make the play, but can't come up and stuff it in the hole. Again, how surprising that they're able to get yardage down the middle of this defense. Terrell Suggs trying to get his troops cranked up. They expect him back soon, which in and of itself would be miraculous given the nature of his injury. Much needed on this Raven defense to add that pass rush that so far is missing from the Ravens outside rushing game. They'll throw it. And the numbers are staggering for Romo this year. We brought it up earlier and he might throw for 300 yards here in the second half and they can talk about receivers not being on the same page. You can talk about anything you want to talk about. Romo this year has not thrown a touchdown on third down and has the lowest quarterback rating for whatever that means. And you and I, neither one of us are big fans about quarterback rating, but when you're dead last in the NFL on third down, that's not a good thing. No, and, and obviously coming with the Dallas Cowboys, it's like playing shortstop for the Yankees. And, you know, you're going to get scrutinized in a way that maybe other quarterbacks don't, but the numbers don't lie. Field goal is good from 43 yards out. So a score to make it 17-13. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Bud Light, the official beer of NFL fans. Here we go. By Direct TV. Don't just watch TV, Direct TV. And by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live moss. Welcome back to Baltimore. And a good one. Just four minutes into this third quarter. Ravens 17, the visiting Cowboys 13. Jones going to bring it out deep from his own end zone. And look out! Jacoby Jones will take it the distance. 108 Talk about staying in your lane. It looks like they've got good coverage, but all of a sudden now they've got a hat on a hat, and all it takes is a subtle crease. You've got to stay in your lane, work with the guy next to you. Obviously didn't happen for the Cowboys there. Second career kickoff return for a touchdown for Jones. He's also run back three punts for touchdown. 108 yards ties it. Remember, Jacoby Jones returning kicks today only because they made Deontay Thompson inactive. So Jones ties that NFL record with a 108-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, tying Randall Cobb, who did it his first game in the NFL with Green Bay a year ago, and Ellis Hobbs of New England back in 2007. Tom, we got to go back to this. I want you to watch right here. Alex Albright, as he now comes down, you've got the right lane. Stop right there. They filled, they filled. You need to keep your lane. 
proper lane integrity. He gets blocked inside. That's all you need is that subtle lane. He's got pushed all the way back into here. Doesn't seem like much, but with the speed of Jacoby Jones, you don't need much. So the largest lead for either team today is 23 to 13. DeMarco Murray is back in the game for Dallas. And the first down carry, next three. And this is where you've got to fight that sense of panic as a play caller for Jason Garrett that it besets everybody at this point where all of a sudden now you're doing okay you get three they return the touchdown you're down by 11 you've run the ball well even though it's a two score separation uh, separation you got to stay with it well, just now under 11 minutes to go early in the third quarter Murray out Felix Jones back in Romo down the middle. And a catch is made by the backup tight end, John Phillips, the first down up to the 42-yard line. Just down the middle in a two-deep zone, the linebackers step up. All you have to do is keep it in front of the safety, Ed Reed. They've had a lot of two tight ends in today to set up the run. It's always good to get those passes off to continue with it. Jones up to the 49-yard line. Great dancing by Jones. Two different backs in Jones and Murray. Murray just kind of tippy toes his way through it. Got great explosion. Jump cuts there. Keep the feet working. Compared to the sheer power of DeMarco Murray. Felix Jones has the burst. He's the big play guy. DeMarco Murray the hammer. He rushes 57 yards for Jones. A second and four right back in his hand. And he has enough for a first down. Well, Jones is rookie year, number one pick out of Arkansas. The first rookie in Cowboy history to score a touchdown in each of his first three games. In 09, had a strong second half. In 2010, for the first time, played in every game. Rushed for 800 yards and had almost 50 receptions. And he was their main guy going into last year before he injured the shoulder in San Francisco in September. Boy, was the 22nd pick of the draft kill, kill, kill. in 2000. You take it back in the first round, you expect a certain level of productivity. Jones once more lost his footing as he tried to cut it back to the inside. And that's what I'm talking about when I mentioned earlier your love about DeMarco Murray. You, con you constantly get positive yards. With Felix Jones, it's a little bit of this. Yeah, he can do the jump cups. Kruger out here on the edge sets it right there. He tries to jump outside, no place to go. You do end up with a few more second 11s and second 12s with a Felix Jones than you do a DeMarco Murray. Murray and Jones standing on the sideline, and Philip Tanner checks into the backfield. Blitz coming, and Romo just throws it up and throws it away. That's just a function of a well-timed pressure on the inside. Just going to blow in through the gaps and through here. He ended with kind of a free rusher on the outside. He actually could have stood a little firmer in the pocket, but with all that heat coming up the middle, felt like he had to flush. First down to the 35-yard line. Strength, size of Bryant with Williams hanging on to him. Right here, this is this is what you expected. You talk about taking a guy high in the draft, the 24th overall pick. 
in 2010. It is that size and speed combination that you expect to see in critical situations. Certainly that was a critical down for the Cowboys. Jones back in. And back with a ball in his right arm, and he carries close to the 30-yard line. That'll be a gain of four, maybe five on first down. Felix Jones came into this game with three carries the entire year for 13 yards. He's carried it 10 times today, making 11 now for 65 yards. For more on DeMarco Murray, here's Laura. I just want to clarify a little about what he's going through. He did sprain his foot during the game. He came out there, tested it, came back. I don't want to say they taped up the foot because I'm not doing it justice. They mummified the foot with tape. Right now, the status is as he can go. He keeps trying to test it out, seeing what he's comfortable with with, with that sprained foot. Thank you, Laura. Third down at two. Jones will get the first down. And inside the 20, shoved out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Outstanding play call by Jason Garrett. What have we seen all day? Pound away inside, pound away inside. Put it at the edges inside the defensive ends. And now I'm just going to get in a situation here where I pitch it to the outside. You can see the tight end blocking down. Tyron Smith creating the edge and getting it outside on a key third down. Great play call by Jason Garrett. First down inside the 19, and back to the ground is Tom Phillip Tanner, and another good pickup. That's a gain of four, almost five, on a first down carry by Tanner. Who had not carried the ball the entire season before this drive. Well, what they're telling Jones and Tanner, like Murray, there's money to be made staying downhill with the blocks. Don't dance around too much. Just hit the hole and go. Well play the drive. Five ten to go in the third quarter. They'll run it once more, and this time bottled up. Courtney Upshaw, they are very high on this rookie out of Alabama. Had a bad shoulder injury in training camp and missed almost three weeks. But as he's gotten healthier and healthier, they have him more excited here in Baltimore. Well, he came in. It was tough. They wanted a compliment to Terrell Suggs. Then Terrell Suggs gets hurt. So now you've got to beat Terrell Suggs, and we'll let Kruger on the other side play the role that we had in mind for you. Another third down. Two or two on third downs. This drive. The play never got off before the play clock expired. Although now, they are pointing, perhaps there was movement before the play clock expired. Well, one side saying uh, we we moved because they moved. It does Bryant Dallas says it's on Baltimore. Encroachment, defense, five yard penalty. Still third down. And it goes back to what we say. It becomes encroachment when you can see here. It looked like Jimmy Smith at the top. And then in here, they're showing the pressure. Right there's the encroachment. I don't know whether the, I think it was down here with Smith and Des Bryant. Jimmy Smith violated it. And all of a sudden now, Des Bryant moves. We usually sad to see that in the interior of the line. I think it happened outside. So that's going to go from the third down and seven. Now to third down and a short two. All right, play caller. Brian, you run it. You've run it well all day long. Third and two, or you throw it? They've hit it inside. They've pitched to the outside. I think the Baltimore Ravens sell out to stop the run. Be a great place for a quick play action fake. Witten's on the edge here. And the Cowboys spend the timeout. Dallas. For this very Denver. important third down. There's a whole lot of talking going on. The officials with Jason Garrett, with John Harbaugh, 
I'm not sure exactly, Brian, what's going on here, but clearly both sidelines are quite upset. Well, it was late substitution by Baltimore. Dallas looked like they were going to try to get the ball off quickly. They got all sorts of people coming and going. There's nothing wrong with this as long as they get off. Here you can see they're still spotting the ball. At right in here, you can see Mike Carey just barely gets out of there. I don't know if what Dallas is saying, wait a minute, you've got to reset the play clock for me if you haven't even spotted the ball yet. You know, John Harbaugh Hard saying we, to Dallas. we were late spotting the ball, so that took the timeout away. Still, third down. So that's Dallas. exactly what happened. Dallas ended up having to call timeout, and Mike Carey saying, no, we spotted the ball late. They needed a new play clock, so they kind of, okay, no harm, no foul. We're going to give it back to you. Now let's go play ball. And we give it back to you as well, right up there. Hey, don't be messing with my screen. Man. Obviously, yeah. I'm not very good at it. Never touch it again. All right, there's still a big third down. This is either going to be mano or mano. I'm not sure you don't try to give up your, your favorite play. I know it's a short third down, but they, these are big bodies in here. You might be better off trying to give a quick play fake and trying to hit the edge. Felix Jones, first down. I mean, Baltimore knew you were coming right at him. And Dallas able to convert. First and goal. This is a big, big offensive line. And when I mean big, I mean tall to get your pad level below this physical defensive line of the Baltimore Ravens. That's the challenge, and they certainly did it there. Now we're going to see, do you want to continue to pound away, think you can get in the end zone that way? And that is a touchdown. What a beautiful throw by Romo. Dennis Bryant. His first receiving touchdown of the season. Beautifully thrown ball, and they all, you, right now, this is where you got to trust your receiver. Did he get his hands underneath it? Looked like he had control all the way through. This is a design route just this way. Tony Romo has to trust that Des Bryant's going to be to the outside and fall away. He threw it right from the get-go, knowing that it was all on his receiver to be where you were supposed to be and when you were supposed to be there. So now point after away for making it a four-point game. Des Bryant, his first touchdown of the season. Much needed touchdown scoring drive by the Cowboys after falling behind 24 to 13. Join the NFL and the American Cancer Society in our fight against breast cancer. Support a crucial catch campaign going on right now. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid right now on authentic NFL pink gear worn by players and coaches. Jacoby Jones. 108-yard kickoff return for a touchdown just a few minutes ago. That was the first time a kickoff had been returned in this game. And he's bringing this one out. This might be further than eight yards into his own end zone, and he is level at the 15-yard line, and there is a penalty flag down. Boy, did he get tattooed right there by Lance Dunbar. He just brought Dunbar off the practice squad and put him on the roster. And now we wait on the penalty that could push. If During it's on the return, the holding, receiving team number 37. Half the distance to the goal. First down, timeout. Well, this will be backed up to what the seven yard line. Baltimore Ravers, if you include the playoffs, they have won 14 consecutive games here at home. But a tight one here with 3.13 to go in the third quarter. 
Yeah. After the penalty, back up to the seven-yard line, and Flacco throws it from his own end zone. Hit as he throws, and way overthrows Smith. Well, we got to go back to this kickoff. Jacoby Ford, or Jones, excuse me, going the distance, the one before you can see here. But I want you to watch them keep the lanes. It's what cost them last time. Now they're keeping lane integrity. Now I got enough bodies to deliver a hit like this. A perfect example of how to do it and how not to do it. That's the first play in this second half by the Baltimore offense. The only time the Ravens have had the ball was the 108-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Second down and 10. Race. Maybe to the line of scrimmage. Well, a moment ago after the touchdown, apparently uh, Des Bryant cramping up. They're going to get him an IV, get some fluids in him. And this all of a sudden becomes one of those moments in a game where the momentum is starting to swing to the Cowboys. The question is, can Baltimore bring it back their way, converting on third and nine? And this is where Joe Flacco has been particularly good this season. Set up the screen. And Victor Butler backs it into the air. He's filling in for the injured Anthony Spencer. Three and out. Excellent job by Dallas on Ray Rice. The, dra the, the back is going to slip out right here. The, the stat line by the Ryan brothers, and I had Rex with me for a number of years. Who has the back? Who has Ray Rice? The answer is everybody. Everybody has to account for him to keep him from hurting you down the field. Everybody had him there. Wayne Harris is standing back waiting on the punt. And still looking around. Field to the 47. Yeah, Right there in the open field and a beautiful play. Played by Shockey Brown. Nice job by the gunner. You want to take that chance, you can make that guy miss. Life can be good, but excellent open field tackle by Shockey Brown. Kill, kill, kill. No Des Bryant to begin this series. No DeMarco Murray to begin this series. Felix Jones for a gain of two on first down. So the Cowboys last week, week and a half ago, they had a bye week last week. They were missing three defensive starters. And now here we are in the third quarter. And right now, at least to begin this drive, they're missing two offensive starters. And Brian, who went to the locker room a moment ago, were told he was cramping up and needed an IV. And the foot injury earlier to DeMarco Murray. You know, it's like Felix uh, Jones is also cramping up a little bit. Romo. A tangled up down there. And a flag comes in. Jimmy Smith. Who's filling in for the Lardarius Webb? Got wrapped up with Miles Austin. Passing See right here at the bottom. And typically, when you have this push and shove, pushing and shoving Miles Austin, kind of guilty of pushing there a little bit, but it's going to get called on the defensive guy for the most part. A 13 yard penalty. And John Harbaugh, none too happy about it. And Reed is left. No, it's not. Cannon breaks one tackle. Pollard comes up to meet him and still lunges forward for an additional yard. Well, I tell you, this Dallas running game, Ryan, you and I have not seen them all year long. It makes you wonder how in the world so many games this year they have fallen in love with a pass when they are able to run the ball like they are running the ball here today. Well, Bill Callahan, the offensive line coach, he's got a big group to work with, and they saw the Kansas City film. They knew if they were going to keep this game competitive, they were going to have to run the ball, and they have certainly committed to that today. Sending notice 
Don't tell me I'm not a factor still. Cool. Classic Ray Lewis seeing the line. He gets all busted up inside. He scrapes to the outside, delivers the big blow. 37 years young. And has energized this crowd. They're down in five. They may not get this play off. Just do. And looking for Austin. Covered beautifully by Smith. So now the Cowboys with the ball to 35. This will be a 52-yard field goal. And I think Jason Garrett might be debating this call. Tony Romo saying, no, no, no. Stay on the sideline. We're going for it. And apparently he got that in his helmet from his head coach. Yeah, this is probably outside the range of your field goal kicker. It would take an awful good punt to put it inside the 20. You may only yield a pot, you know, 15 yards at best if you put this thing into the end zone. Worth a shot. One and three on fourth down. Will they get the play off? Trying to draw them off sides, look like. Nope, not going to happen. Okay, and this is the classic. You try to draw them offside. Doesn't happen. Now you back it up. You actually want to back up a little bit on a punt like this because it gives you more of a chance to catch it inside the 20. If it goes into the end zone, the thing comes out to the 20. You've, you know, you've yielded 15 yards. This actually gives you more of a chance to kick it down inside. So it does Bryant back on the sideline. And no sooner did he come out, Felix Jones went in to also get some fluids. He's also cramping like Bryant. Ed Reed is standing back at the 10 yard line. End over end punt. And lead to fair catch. So back to back series for the Ravens. They're only two. Possessions offensively will start inside their own 10 yard line. And we turn the page to the fourth quarter. A thrilling final stanza begins in a moment. Twenty four twenty, you know, a tight game and here. You got coach Anquan Bolden telling him here's what he's going to do. This is what the receiver's going to do. You love it when you get coaching from all quarters. Yeah. Jimmy Smith played it exactly right. It's big play by Smith. He was whistled for the penalty on a pass interference call. But a field goal nonetheless, you see. 14 points in the second quarter. That has been the M.O. on this Baltimore team. Slow to get started in the opening period. Turning it on in the second quarter. And the only touchdown scored by the Ravens here in the second half was on a 108-yard kickoff return by Jacoby Jones. Bernard Pierce in the backfield gets the ball on first down. It'll be a game of two. Right now, Dallas is winning the field position battle by kicking the ball twice down inside the 10. Baltimore, like we said, the most explosive team thus far in the season. They need to take this shot down the field. They need to change this field position battle. They don't want to be punting from the shadow of their own end zone yet again. Ravens have only run four plays offensively here in the third quarter. That's right out. And then a first down, so they ran three plays total in the third quarter. Trying to turn the corner is Pierce. And Ray Rice will come back onto the field. We have not called the name to Marcus Ware. Five sacks coming into the game, one of the most dominant pass rushers in the league over the last eight years. What a job Michael Orr and company have done on him for the third down. And now being chased. And where, after not calling his name all day, finds a quarterback. Well, you just said Michael Orr has had him on there pretty much all day. But you're going to see a stunt here by where spinning guns comes all the way around to the inside. You have to work in combination with the guard. 
Bobby Williams in on that left side with Orr got caught up on the stunt and right on cue, right when we say he hasn't played all day, a huge sack for the All-Pro. That's two possessions offensively for the Ravens here in the second half, both three and out, and a short punt coming up to get it back in the game is Des Bryant. And he carries across the 40 and run out of bounds at the 37-yard line. The Cowboys in business to begin this fourth quarter. And their defense standing tall here in the second half. Well, the legendary Bill Walsh would tell you that sacks are important, but it's all about when the sacks come. You can see here right there just the matchup. He's getting overwhelmed, Bobby Williams is, on the inside. That ends up pushing him back into Michael Orr as well. That set up that stunt that allowed DeMarcus Ware to get the sack. Tanner cuts it back to the inside. I mean, they're third on the depth chart there at tailback. DeMarco Murray chewing up big time yards in the opening half, injured his foot. We've only seen him for one play here in the second half. Felix Jones standing on the sideline. And now Philip Tanner, who has not carried the ball the entire year, is in there right now. the first down for the Cowboys to the 22-yard line. Tom, there's nothing fancy about this. You're just going to see a straight downhill ISO. We haven't seen a reverse. We haven't seen counters. We haven't seen traps. Just downhill, eyes up, taking on whatever comes. Excellent job by the offensive line and tight ends of the Dallas Cowboys just manhandling the front of the Baltimore Ravens. Tanner once more, and once more tries to cut it back to the inside. And that'll be a gain of two, maybe three on first down. Well, Dean Pease told us it's all about points scored, red zone efficiency, and third down, and those aren't great numbers today. You need to be down in the high 20s, low 30s for red zone efficiency. Third down obviously needs to be well below 40%, and those numbers aren't the numbers defensive coordinator Dean Pease is going to like so far today. Lance Dunbar just added to a 53-man roster before this game. Now in the backfield. On the second down and nine, and they give it to Dunbar. And look at that spinning move by the former North Texas star. Signed as a college free agent. Spectacular collegiate career. So a couple of Texas guys. And Tanner, who grew up in Dallas, and now Dunbar. And this, again, Tom, this is just downhill. You don't see guys pulling. You don't see traps. It, this is just, we're going downhill, and we want to see if you can hold up. This is old-time downhill ISO football. Boy, the trust to have in a guy who's never touched the ball in an NFL game. Down in the red zone, on the road in Baltimore, flag down. You know, it's an old cliche, obviously, uh, you know, about desperate times call for desperate measures. If you don't have your top two guys, somebody's got to get the ball. You know, next man up. Illegal ship. Offense. Two men moving before oh, the boy, snap. Not bad. resetting for a second. Five-yard penalty. It's still first. Yeah, this is, you saw it last week against Kansas City. This 200-plus yards allowed in back-to-back -back games. You know, I, I was fortunate to be associated both good and bad with some of those good and bad games. This is rare territory for the Baltimore Ravens, and it can be demoralizing for a team that's not used to giving up this kind of physical run game. Tanner back into the Dallas backfield. So it's first and goal, but it's backed up to the 15. by Kruger coming off what they thought was the best game of his young career last week in Kansas City. Paul Kruger taking over for Jared Johnson, the longtime outside linebacker for the Ravens. 
now in San Diego. Kruger has had to adapt his role to this, not only in terms of a pass rusher, a guy that can drop, but can set that edge, particularly with Terrell Suggs gone. They're letting Courtney Upshaw fill that role, and Kruger now has to fill the role for the departed J.J. Crossing pattern caught by Bryant right on him is Smith. Third and goal from the eight. You've seen this all day, just using the size of Des Bryant. Jimmy Smith right on the receiver, but there's nothing you can do short of pass interfere from this guy pulling the ball down. You do it again right now, same play? Yeah, because you got to figure they're going to pound the box up in here and try to take away those quick passing lanes. That's the one thing right now. They may try to get pressure to force you to have the quick throw. That's why he's in gun, to buy a little time. Three-man rush. Romo is sacked by Nada. Just a four-man rush you can see down here. Just too many bodies. Miles Austin on the back end. No place to go. Here on the inside, Ogletree. Witten in behind it. Ray Lewis back underneath there. On the far side, Des Bryant. Jimmy Smith pushing him all the way out of bounds. Absolutely no place to go with just a three-man rush. So now a 34-yard field goal try. By Dan Bailey. And the draw brings it back to the middle. A one-point game with 8.22 to go. This game on Fox is sponsored by McDonald's. I'm loving it. By the Samsung Galaxy S3. The next big thing is already here. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Baltimore 24, Dallas 23. 8.22 to play. Jay Ratliff and his Dallas defense has been nothing shy of spectacular. Joe Flacco and the Ravens offensively have run six plays from scrimmage here in the second half. Jones got him on the board with a touchdown. And a good return here up to the 25-yard line. So now Flacco, can he start chewing up clock? Take a look at the second half numbers in total yards. The Ravens with three yards of offense, but a kickoff return for a touchdown. Up leading to this one point advantage is Ray Rice gets more yards on one carry to begin this drive than they've had in this entire second half. And let's remember how they finished the half in the no huddle, spread it out up and down the field. They've had to get conservative backed up. Looks like they're back in the no huddle. And Flacco will just go right up the gut right now. Brian, it's one thing to commit to the no huddle, to run the no huddle, but now you have a one point lead and you're closing in on seven and a half minutes. You want to stay in no huddle? That's what they are. That's where they've been their best. That's why I brought up the point. They're at their best when they went the length of the field in the no huddle. They got conservative backed up. Okay, I'm with that. But if this is what you are and this is what you do best, they're still running at it as well, just like the play fake here sets up the play. Yeah, I think this is who you are, and this is what John Harbaugh is committed to. I understand you got great defense. You want to run the ball and give it to Ray Rice. You're still getting in his touches. This is what you are. This is what you do. Second down and ten. Flacco gets it away. And short of the first down by maybe a yard or two is pit close to midfield. We'll see where they spot it. He's about a half a yard short, and they may run the same play we saw in second and one a minute ago. Yeah, just just wedge it up and get you the first down. They're going to give it to Rice. Not a bad choice. Not a bad choice at all. That's a first down crossing midfield. 
Well, you're under seven minutes to go. Inside, Jay Ratliff right here working over longtime center Matt Burke pushes him back at that point needed to get off the block Matt Burke been at this a long time smart enough to go you know you come with me four yards deep ball carrier can get by you that way too quick throw to Bolden he said he wasn't touched the official said he was Matt Burke is playing in his 200th career game today we took Matt Burke when I was in Minnesota Smart kid out of Stanford. They honored him coming out today. 200 career starts. That's pretty good. Out of Harvard. Out of Harvard. What did I say? Stanford. Stanford. Well, you know, it's easy to make that. Some some people go to Harvard. There you some go. To California go to coming out you again. I know. Even though you live here. There's a throw. Right open. Golden. And he's inside the five. And this is what Baltimore does. We just talked about it. They drove the length of the field, does not get a good jam and falls down, does car. That certainly doesn't help. Safety needs to get over the top. This is the way they scored, driving the length of the field with a touchdown throw to Torrey Smith. They now that they're out of the shadow of their goal post, get back into the no huddle, drive the length of the field. And right now, Rob Ryan's going, you know what? I prefer when they're backed up on their five running the ball. I'll start. Offense number 74. Five yard county is still first. It's Michael Orr. Down the left side. Boy, you get down into here, and these little penalties just kill you as a coach. Well, ever yeah. since we saw Bolden, we said, you know, hadn't heard from him all day. Look no, you that. said that. I think you, right. you brought it up. Guilty as charged. I'm blaming you. You're the well, one. You're, you're the catalyst. Pointing the finger. I know. If I'd have said it, he still wouldn't have a catch. <laughs> Five ten to go. First and goal from the nine. Flacco to screen and leap for the one defender and twisting and turning his leech inside the five. Boy, that is a nimble footwork by the 260-pound leech. This is a big man to be doing this. Look at that. You don't expect it from the described hammer. That's what Cam Cameron calls him. He's the hammer in our offense. Back to Rice. Dropped for a two-yard loss by Kenyon Coleman. So now a third and goal. Well, this may be as big a play as this Dallas Cowboy defense has faced all year long. Down by one. They've been moved on the length of the field. It's a third down play ostensibly if they don't get it obviously they can kick a field goal. Well they brought in an extra big body and they're making sure that the officials know about it or what are they talking right, about here? something here. Flag along the sideline which Offside, we did not see. Defense. Oh. Five yards after the field goal. No no. Well, what's more important is they pick up a down. Well, it must have been, must have lined up offsides, I guess, by the Dallas Cowboys. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Player sprinting off the field did not get to the sideline in time. What the is? second in goal, rather than third in goal. And Flacco to throw. Incomplete. Pressure from where? Just a clean release here and on the edge. I got to tell you, Danny McRae and Bruce Carter, somebody was wrong. Carter should have been underneath on the flat with McRae. They were looking at one another. We better get this sorted out because we may see it again. Right now, third and goal from just outside the one yard line in the I formation. They hand it to Rice, and he finds the end zone. All right, Brian, you've got a seven-point lead with that touchdown. You kicked you kick the extra point. Kick the extra point right. here. Takes it eight point. Now you. you've made them score a touchdown and go for a two-point conversion. Look at Ray Rice. 
since 2008. More times than any other back. 100 or more yards from scrimmage. He led the NFL in yards from scrimmage last year. Scoring a franchise record, 15 touchdowns. Second only to Jamal Charles in yards from scrimmage this year. The point after does indeed make it an eight-point game. Romo and the Cowboys with 4.41 to go. Trail by eight. Sponsored by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. 4.41 to go. That's a big-time drive turned in by Flacco, Rice, and company to take a one-point lead now to an eight-point lead. After going three and out, there are only two offensive possessions here in the second half. Dunbar will take a knee. We will take a timeout. Certainly our thoughts and prayers and condolences to the family and many friends of Alex Karras. Longtime Detroit Lion passed away this Wednesday. One of the great characters and players in a game of football. Phoenix Jones on a first down carry up to the 23 yard line. Cowboys have rushed it for 215 yards today. Again, Ray Lewis having that experience to know when to fall back into the play, when to scrape over the top. It's times like these that you count on that future Hall of Famer to step up and make the plays that need to be played. At some point, Dallas may have to take a shot down the field. Romo, good protection to Whitten. And he is stuffed a yard shy of the first down. So third down upcoming. Now really, you look at three key times in this game. The Romo interception very early in the game when they were down in the red zone. Two drives where they stalled with a chance to get a touchdown. And then the big kickoff return. And the turnover there. Possibly taking three points off the board. Yeah. What a difference that could make in terms of if they do score. They're likely going to have to go for two. And maybe now a penalty as the first down is made Both by start. Jones. Off oh, the wow. 78. Five yards, third down. You take a less than third and one or a third and one and turn it into a third and six now. Jordan right here Cardell. on the far left. Now we didn't see the movement. I guess they're saying he did move before. Yeah, it didn't look like him. Brought in that extra body. Now this changes the price of poker here now. So instead of third and one, we go to third and six. We've seen Des Bryant on little end breaking in cuts, real shallow. Jason Witten down in here. Third down. And there's Witten. Money in the bank. A first down of the 35, 325 left to go. Excellent job picking up the pressure here. This offensive line working all the way up off the edge right there. Excellent block by Felix Jones picking out the up, picking up the outside rusher. So first down at their own 35, eight point differential. Keeping with the two tight end offense gives them balance to run the ball if they choose to do so. They'll put it up first down, and Romo is going to run it. And he slides up to midfield, but there is a flag down behind the line of scrimmage. This might come back. Holding offense number 77. Ten yard penalty is still first down. It's Tyron Smith. Over here on the left side, I think, as Romo works up the package. Good wide rusher. He's in good shape. He doesn't need to, but kind of a takedown, pulling Kruger down at the last minute. The, hard, the sad part is he didn't need it. Romo had already stepped up into the pocket and had gone well into the play. Defense! Defense! 
Such a tough place to come and try and win a game. Including the playoffs. 14 straight wins for the Ravens here at home. Kind of think draw and quick screen here half the time. Looks coming. They get it away. And they have a large shunt to make up. And Bryant spins out of one tackle. And is wrapped up by Ian Badejo. And it brings up a lengthy third down try here for the Cowboys. Well, I beg your pardon, a second down and 12 after the penalty. See the numbers on Bryant coming off eight catches for a career high 105 yards against Chicago. The three drops in that game. Miscommunication with his quarterback. Bump it off to Felix Jones. He slips a tackle and appears to have a first down. Another nice call by Jason Garrett, basically flanking Felix Jones out, looking down the field. Pelotti Nada inside, getting bounced around. Looks like he's coming up just, he may be cramping up as well. A lot of guys cramping. It is a cool afternoon. It's always a wonderment to me how guys can cramp up on a relatively cool day. First down at the 46-yard line, and Romo all day to throw it. And he throws it in a double coverage, and it's batted down by Williams. Let's quickly go to Los Angeles. For a not-so-gentle program reminder, Giants, Niners, the match of last year's NFC title tilt comes your way. America's game of the week when you guys are done. But right now, for what we hope is a good finish in Baltimore, Tom and Brian. All right, great, thank you. We have 2.18 to go. Cowboys, all three of their timeouts up. They have a two-minute warning. It's a second and ten. Romo 13 times game-winning drives. But he just would settle for a game-time drive. And it's going to take a touchdown and a two-point conversion to do that. Being chased, throws it out of bounds. Courtney Upshaw on his trail. Third down. Baltimore opting for coverage here. They've got it bracketed the outside on Ogletree. Here on the other side of the slot, Des Bryant and that shallow little underneath route they've been hitting all day. Romo took his vision to the right side. If he had gone to the left, he might have had a completion. They're not going to get the playoff. Now they just did with a second left. And Romo throws. Is that a good catch? Nope. Try to get Bryant. Bryant, how can it take so long to get a play call for Dallas in such a critical situation? And there's clearly confusion on the offensive line. They were showing pressure from one side. You've got to redirect your line to account for the pressure. But the clock is catching them, and now that, that what's, that's what leaves you with a fourth and ten. This might be it for the Cowboys. They're not going to get this play yeah, away. Too much communication having to go on. You've got to make this a little simpler. Witten trying to get to the marker and does. Janelle Ellerby tried to put a shot on him. So they convert on fourth down and ten. And we'll have one more play prior to the two-minute warning. I've seen it time and time and time again, Tom, when teams come in and try to do too much, trying to match pressure for pressure. This guy's here. We'll change the line there. Try to get in too expansive a check system. Dallas has kind of dodged a bullet here, but they got to either simplify it or maybe just let the center make the call. But Tony Romo is having to do too much right now. Hand it off. Tanner. And a good pickup on first down. Seven yards. 
for the Chester Kimball High School graduate. Can the Tau Cowboys tie this thing up? That's Dr. Leanne Kerr on the left and Dr. Andy Tucker on the right taking care of Ray Lewis. He is not in the game right now. Look at that right elbow. Danelle Ellerby, who played so well in Lewis's absence after the toe injury last year, is in there now. Second and four at the Ravens' 37-yard line. Dallas a touchdown and a two-point conversion away from tying the game. And Romo throws. And there's a flag all the way down at the 15-yard line. Well, we welcome many of you from across the country wrapping up your Holy early games. Defense number 22, five-yard penalty automatic. First down. This will be the penalty against Jimmy Smith holding on to Miles Austin. And an automatic first down. We'll put the ball at the 33-yard line. Ravens with 14 points in the second quarter to open up a halftime lead. The Ravens ran a grand total of three plays on offense in the first quarter. Third quarter, three plays of offense to begin the fourth quarter. But it was a kickoff return for a touchdown before their last scoring drive to go up eight with 1.49 to play. The Cowboys have won the ball at this Baltimore defense with extraordinary success. Cowboys have rushed for 221 yards. Although they have lost to Marco Murray, and it's been a limited second half for Felix Jones. Ray Rice up over 100 total yards from scrimmage. And an eight-point game with a minute 20 to go. Blitz coming. Looking for Ogletree, and it's in and out of his hands. And a flag is down behind the line of scrimmage. Personal foul, chop block number 28 went low while engaged by 71 high. 15 yard penalty, still second half. That is a huge penalty on the chop block by Felix Jones. 15 yards. You're going to see it right here, 71 Livingston. Oh boy, no boy, that, that, that's a bad call. You have to be engaged with one man with a deliberately below the waist block. It looked like Jones engaged him first. That is a terrible, terrible call. Here you're going to look at it again. It looks like Jones, he engages, and then, no, that's a terrible call at a critical time in the game. Looks coming again. And Romo just tried to get it away. And Miles Austin looking for a penalty flag. Third down. Obviously, down eight, minute seven. You don't have to get it all back on a third down because clearly you're in four down range. Cowboys have come here and played a good game today. They have. And this, you know, you got a long way to go. You don't need to all get it in one throw because you've got the two downs left. You got plenty of timeouts. Baltimore, Dallas has three. And again, Romo directing traffic at a major intersection. Flag down again. This is the one area that appears to be in major oh, disarray. Sorry. Offense number 85, five yards penalty. Still third down. And Brian, I go back to you again as a former head coach and offensive coordinator before that. What is going on here at the line of scrimmage with Dallas? Well, I've said it a whole game long. You find yourself doing too much at times. We've seen Tony Romo checking with outside wide receivers, then trying to shift late to get into position to help. You change the protection scheme and getting them pushed one side to the other. I think they announced this penalty on the wrong team. Yeah, I think you may be right. Let's see. False start on 85 stands. They're down. Oh, yeah. all right, never mind. 
Yeah, and then sometimes and as, a, as a coach and as a quarterback, when it's an outside receiver that's just lined up in a stance, it just drives you nuts when they flinch or move to bring about this type of penalty. Stay tuned. Following the game for the Motorola Game Break Show. I guarantee you there's no place on Jason Garrett's play call that says third and 25 or whatever it is, third and 27. That category's not on there. you got to make this up here. Blitz again. Bryant. Breaks one tackle, breaks a couple of more tackles, and brings it back into at least a shot range. It should have been about eight yards back from where he's run out of bounds. Yeah, we brought this down to a manageable fourth and 11. Maybe a fourth and 10 here. to the 22-yard line. All day to throw for Romo, and he finds his anchor. That's Witten. What a spectacular catch. The hardest catch you're ever going to make as a wide receiver or tight end. You can see Witten here on the right. The ball going away. Your palms are down. You really, literally have to kind of reach down and snatch that thing up. What a spectacular catch by Jason Witten. This guy, and there are some great tight ends in this league, but it's hard to imagine, and we've seen Tony Gonzalez so many times. I mean, Witten, by the time his career is over at 31, has a legitimate chance to break a lot of the records Gonzalez has already. This guy has just been a sensational player. Yeah, and, and, and not to mention what we just talked about, a hey, spleen injury. I mean, a lacerated spleen. My goodness. And, and did not miss a play. And then people want to say, well, but he's dropping the ball. <laughs> you know? Wow, I, I'd be lucky if you, I could watch a game <laughs> coming back after a last week's spleen. <laughs> this is interesting now. What we Dean Peace says red zone touchdown efficiency. Well, this is going. I don't care what the other numbers are. If he keeps it 0 for 1 right here, he's going to think of that as a successful day. 15th play this drive and a couple of huge penalties the Cowboys have overcome. But now can they get it in the end zone? Under a minute. Witten for a gain of nine to the seven-yard line. Nice job you're going to see here picking up the pressure off the outside. They work the line the proper way. This is why that communication has to be so good we're talking about. you got to make sure your center and guards are going the right way. The back knows which way they're going so he can copy it the other way. Same route. He just threw a little bit higher, obviously, for Jason Witten. Wade Lewis still injured on the sideline. Unable to go. And you saw Ellerby in coverage there on Witten. All-out blitz. Jump ball to the corner. Incomplete. Great coverage. This time by Shockey Brown on Des Bryant. You, you can't do it any better than this by Shockey Brown. Contact, look to the ball, look to play it at that point. Physically pin him to the sideline so he has to be out of bounds. I didn't even have to push him. He had no place to go but out of bounds. Of course, they're already missing Darius Webb, who left the game earlier with an injured leg. And guys like Brown getting a chance to play. Third in the yard, Cowboys have two timeouts remaining. And again, Baltimore showing blitz, and they come, and they hand it off to get the first down to Felix Jones. He's to the three-yard line. Timeout, Dallas. And that's the good thing for the Dallas Cowboys right now. They've got all the timeouts they need to orchestrate whatever they want. The key to that, meaning you can run the ball here if you want to. 
Typically, you might think, okay, I need a couple shots to the end zone, but you can hand this thing off. You can throw it underneath. You can do whatever you want sitting here with enough timeouts. They've got one timeout left. That's the key. You don't have to save any timeouts because a field goal does you no good. You know, typically, if this were a tighter game, you'd like to keep one of those in your back pocket for a field goal, but that's not the issue here. So that timeout is huge, plus you have it down in distance. You can dirt the ball here if you want to. Terrell Suggs wishing he could be in there right now. Well, they're hoping to have him back. There were reports he might be back as early as the Houston game. But they're saying perhaps a week later than that. Des Bryant down here, either with the fade or let him run that little shallow route he's been running all day long. And now Baltimore wants timeout. John Harbaugh's team will play four of its next five on the road after playing four of their first six here at home. Now, we mentioned if you include the playoffs, during the regular season, they've won 13 in a row at home. You tack on one more in the postseason. So they're gunning for their 15 straight home win here today. Again, we welcome even more of you joining us across the country. We're down to the final 36 seconds here in Baltimore. 31-23, the Cowboys have the ball at the Ravens' four-yard line. One timeout left, a touchdown and a two-point conversion, a successful two-point conversion away from sending this game into overtime. As I said earlier, you got a timeout in your back pocket. You're on a first down. So whatever you do with this first play, you have a lot of options. You can save the first down and dirt the second down play. Still gives you two shots at the end zone with a timeout, a third down play, a timeout, orchestrated call on fourth down. Or you can go ahead and take it, take your shots here. You might even have two plays called in the huddle right now to save yourself the down. And all. We got one on one matchups across the board with everybody else piled inside. Right. And it is a touchdown. All right, now, Brian, everything you've seen. They've won the ball extraordinarily well. They have to go for the two point conversion to try and tie this thing. You're Jason Garrett. What are you thinking about calling here? You've got to give yourself the option. I would spread it out and give myself a check option that says if I want to hand the, the ball off inside, they get real loose. If I get the one-on-one -on -one matchups I just had, we've seen what you've done with that. They're three for three on two-point conversions under Jason Garrett. I like his odds. Trying to make it four out of four. All the way. And dropped by Bryant, who was looking for a flag. It looked like it hit him right in the shoulder pad. We saw the earlier touchdown to Des Bryant with the same type of throw, back shoulder to the outside. Tony Romo, and that's as well as you can throw it. That's got to be caught. He can look for all the flags in the world he wants. That's two guys bumping on one another. That has got to be caught. Uh, three drops last week. He's had an outstanding game here today. I mean, that cannot be denied. 12 catches, 94 yards. But again, that is a catch that you're asking Des Bryant to make, and you're not asking for too much. I'm asking anybody to make that catch. Now, onside kick obviously is coming with the timeout. We get this onside kick. We got plenty of time to get into field goal range. So this is not done by a long shot. We'll, we'll see 
if the Cowboys can successfully recover this kick, because if it's handled by the Ravens, it's all over. Timeout Time called by Baltimore. Baltimore. You look at these young coaches, Tom, John Harbaugh, Jason Garrett. I used to be that young at one point. But it's calls like this and it's games like that that's got me looking like an old man that I am now. If you're wondering, Dan Bailey, only twice in his career, it's only his second year out of Oklahoma State, only twice has he tried the onside's kick, and neither team of the Cowboys successfully recovered. The key to defending an onside kick is the front wave has to be focused on taking out the onrushers of the Dallas Cowboys. Let the guys at the second level where you make a mistake is if you try to handle it up front, that creates that hole for the kickoff team. So you've got to block the front wave and let the other guys behind you. You got Anquan Bolden on one side. And Dwayne Hair, or excuse me, Anquan Bolden's up here. That's what he's there for. He's got good hands. Tandon Doss is on the other side. The front line's got to take out the kickoff team and then do the dribble. Uh oh, that got far enough. This may be only to they, they get out from under the bottom of this pile. But it looked like the first Baltimore player went to pick it up and it went right through his leg. Oh boy, how many times is this changing hands? And the thing that always worried me with that one, you got your kicker down there in the middle, being one of those guys tried to pull it out. Cowboys have the ball. Right here, handling up front. Now you got the kicker in there. Trying to, well, no, he stayed high. He was smart. Nice job fighting. And we don't know how many times this thing, Andrew Holmes is the one that came up with it. We don't know how many times this changed hands. So Andre Holmes down at the bottom of that pile after it went right through the legs. And we're looking at about 20, 20 yards. Is that Ian Bedejo, 51? Yep, that's yeah, it. it is. Right through like a shortstop. And Brandon Iamandejo is one of their best special teamers. That's why he's up there. Need about 20 yards. You got a timeout. Bailey, his career long is 51 yards. So you need to get to about the 33 yard line. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Blitz coming. Romo looking down the sideline. Boy, that was a beautiful throw. And a flag is in. Shockey Brown. In coverage of Ogletree. That's the arm bar. Oh. It's reaching up with the arm bar. You can look back all you want. If you reach up with the arm bar, even got a little bit of the face mask. I don't know if that wasn't the final nail in the call. Might have gotten away from it, except his hand reached up to the face mask. The arm bar is going to get you every time. He was actually in excellent position. Pass interference. Defense wow. number 20. And the spot of the foul. Automatic. Push down. And the spot of the foul puts you in field goal position. Well, he said they needed to get to the 33 to get to what would match the career along of Bailey. They're about a yard and a half beyond that, but obviously the Cowboys don't want to be kicking from 50 yards to try and win this thing. Now, I said before, because the three points didn't make a, a difference at the time, you want to keep the time out in your back pocket here to kind of push this thing forward. That leads you to, you can kill the ball if you want to save the timeout and go ahead and kill the down. And a red line will mark the spot that matches a career long, which is about where Bryant caught the ball. I would imagine they have, they're going to have to spend that time out. Bryant what continues to bark at the officials, and I'm sure he's saying forward progress. And Romo's saying, everybody get up on the line of scrimmage yeah, they're here. taking way too long here. Boy, this is Oh, terrible. boy. And now they're going to call a timeout and have goodness, to kick the field goal. Goodness gracious. They had an opportunity even with the timeout. Wow. 
That's a missed opportunity there. They could have dirted it and saved that. Still had the timeout in their back pocket. Now, we mentioned that Dan Bailey's career long is 51 yards. That came a year ago. He has not attempted a field goal beyond 39 yards this year. Five out of five. His long on the season is 39 yards. He's got a holder who missed the entire week of practice with an injury in the punter, Chris Jones. Bailey in his career from 50 plus to a four. And this will be to try and match his career long of 51. A chance to win it by Dan Bailey. Two seconds left, and John Harbaugh is saying, oh, okay. Home winning streak, including the playoffs, will go to 15 in a row, but this has to be one of the tougher ones during the 15-game stretch. Well, they played well on the road. I've said it a million times, and we'll continue to say it. Winning on the road against a good team, the National Football League, may be the most difficult thing to do in all professional sports, in my opinion. This is an outstanding Raven team now sitting here at five and one. So there's no shame for the Dallas Cowboys. They're going to look back on this and see several missed opportunities to have impacted this game. To have had that three points back from the interception to give yourself another opportunity with the clock management here at the end. But that's what life in the NFL is about. It's a series of one two or three things in any given game that can get you beat. Cowboys will go to two and three. And the difference between three and two and two and three in terms of making the playoffs, 51% compared to 21%. And for the first time under John Harbaugh, the Ravens have started a season five and one. Brian Billick, Laura Oakman, Tom Brenneman saying so long from Baltimore. America's Game of the Week coming up next.